Hello, everybody. Welcome to International Podcast Day 2018. We are live again featuring 40 different podcasters from 16 different countries. Make sure you're using hashtag International Podcast Day to share the, the celebration. Uh, we are very excited this hour to have Chris Nessie from the United States. He's going to be sharing the power of podcasts in education. Chris, welcome. How are you doing today? I, I am doing great. This is a great day for all of podcasting. It is. I'm and we're, yeah, I'm very excited to have you. Uh, we've never featured podcasts within the educational space. Uh, it's going to be really cool seeing how podcasting has trickled down into the classrooms, in the schools, and students are being encouraged more than ever to become content creators. Really looking forward to what you have to offer. Real first, um, I want to talk, uh, and thanks for our 2018 sponsors. Our, our platinum sponsor is Blueberry. They are a full service podcasting company providing hosting stats, advertising opportunities. You can find more about them at blueberry.com. Thanks to repurpose.io, they automatically convert your audio podcast into videos and upload them to YouTube and other social media channels. You can try it for free today, repurpose.io slash IPD. And of course, podcastsuccessacademy.com. This is a resource-packed community with workshops, tutorial, tutorials, courses, they're going to teach podcasters the skills that no one told them that they needed to succeed. Also, you can get free access through there by just visiting podcastsuccessacademy.com. Well, Chris, I don't want to stand in your way anymore. I'm really looking forward to this. I know a number of educators are out there as well looking forward to this. So uh, welcome to International Podcast Day, and you have the floor. All right. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, happy International Podcast Day to you. I hope you've enjoyed all of the live broadcasting that's been taking place since yesterday. Um, so let's get started with the power of podcasts in education. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and my role in podcasting, and hopefully we'll have some fun for the next 50 to 55 minutes. So let's get started. So the power of podcasts in education, a little bit about me as I get started here. This is the joy of one being live and two having multiple monitors. So I know that many of us can relate to this. So here we go. So again, my name is Chris Nessie and the following four words really categorize who I am. I'm a husband, a father, an educator, and a podcaster. And those things are in that order because that's what my wife makes me list them as. So I'm sure many of you can understand that. In addition to being a podcaster, I am by day, I am a high school social studies teacher from here in the great state of New Jersey, where I teach high school social studies. In 2013, my wife said to me, Chris, you love education. You love technology. It's your passion. To which she said, I'm tired of listening to you talk about it. So why don't you learn how to start a podcast? And there you go. The house of ed tech was born. I launched the podcast back in January of 2014, and I've been podcasting fortnightly. That's every two weeks, if you didn't know that. <laughs> um, and I've been doing it, you know, this will be the end of my sixth year when I finished 2018, over 100 episodes. And I've gotten the opportunity through podcasting to talk to so many amazing educators and thought leaders in the education space. So it's just been a wild ride. Now, when I started, one podcast quickly became not enough. So I still do the House of Ed Tech. The other podcast that I host is called Podcast PD. And that's where I talk with my friends, Stacey Lindis and AJ Bianco. And we talk about and provide professional development for teachers on any number of topics. And we do that every two weeks in the weeks that I'm not doing House of Ed Tech. But if that wasn't enough, I now also, thankfully, and it helps kind of keep the lights on here in the House of Ed Tech, I also produce a number of podcasts. So as you can see here, I produce a podcast called the Google Teacher Tribe Podcast, and that is a podcast all about using Google in education, and it's a wonderful podcast. Uh, another podcast I help produce is called Assist Learning, hashtag Assist Learning, and that's for the educator who kind of wants to deal with the intersection of education technology and special education. And the newest podcast that I'm a part of is called Partial Credit, which you can find at partial.credit. Yes, that's the website, no.com. It's partial.credit. And that is education, pop culture, and shenanigans. I have a lot of fun producing that. I am on Twitter. I am at Mr. Nessie. 
And my website is chrisnessy.com. So as if hosting podcasts and producing podcasts just wasn't enough, podcasting taught me that there's a big community out there. And when I got into podcasting, I wanted to find other people who were educators and who were creating content. Before I got into podcasting, I was very much somebody who liked to retweet other people and I liked to promote what other people were saying and doing and creating. And then I realized with a little nudge from my wife that I should be creating content too and putting out my voice and my opinion and my perspective on what I'm passionate about. And that is education and technology. So that led me in 2015 to create the Education Podcast Network, which you can find at edupodcastnetwork.com. So for everybody who's watching today, if you are a teacher or if there is a teacher in your life, send them over to edupodcastnetwork.com. We have fantastic podcasts that are available and geared towards the K-12 and beyond educator. So for example, we have the House of Ed Tech, Google Teacher Tribe, the Cult of Pedagogy podcast. If you're looking or somebody's looking for something, and this might be great for everybody who's listening here for International Podcast Day, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to start to get involved and and shape and kind of influence, you know, and bring that mindset into schools, then you need to check out the Start Ed Up podcast hosted by a friend of mine, Don Wetrick from Indiana. And his podcast is all about bringing that entrepreneurial mindset into schools. And he runs a fantastic class. So definitely a podcast worth checking out. Another one of my favorites here is called Dads in Ed. That is three dads who are educators in different degrees. Well, now it's two dads. (laughs) Um, And they produce a podcast that is all about being a dad and an educator. So they talk about family. They talk about education and how they kind of make that all work together. So again, some great education-based podcasts. And in my opinion, this is the premier education podcast network. There are thousands of other education podcasts out there, but these podcasts have been curated by me. And it's also provided me with the opportunity to connect with other people who are doing what I do day to day and also creating content. So it's a nice little support system and a nice little community I've built. So if you can find that in your niche, I certainly encourage you to do that. So why am I here? Why am I participating in International Podcast Day? Well, if the first few minutes didn't really lay that out, I am addicted to podcasts. I I love the thrill of sitting here with my microphone and, you know, the various software. I love editing audio. I love creating show notes. So I'm, I'm sorry to all the different people who are selling their show note services and things like that, but I enjoy doing that. I, I consider myself to be a creative type and you know, I wanted to kind of bring to your ears and and your eyes this evening a little bit about how there's a huge market where podcasting is taking place and growing very rapidly. So again, I'm happy to be here sharing this with you today. So the benefits of podcasting in education, they are so powerful. And I've been presenting on this for a number of years. So it's second nature for me to be talking about this. Here are the things that a podcast can link us to, whether it's you, your students, your school district, or your school. A single podcast has the ability to connect you with your local community, the state you live in, your nation, the entire world. Podcasting and education really allows us to not just flatten the walls of our classroom, but to completely decimate the walls of our classroom and allow students, our youngest learners, the future of wherever you are to create content and put their voice out there. And that's something that I really try to bring in, not just with podcasting, but also other forms of content creation. It's just so powerful to get students putting their voice out there and teaching them from as young as we can that they've got a point of view and a perspective and experiences that sometimes get overlooked and ignored simply because they're young or they're students. But I believe in a different way, and that's to empower our students and let them put their voices out in the world. Hey, quick shout out. Hello, Eileen. Great to see you here. Thank you for checking out my presentation. I hope all is well with you. 
Now, for the audience I'm talking to right now, we all understand clearly, you know, the, the, the presentation that came right before mine, you know, was talking about, you know, the, uh, the, the Spanish podcast and the world of podcasting in, in where, where that blends with Spanish. So podcasting and education allows us teachers, our students to have a global reach. It's no different than, you know, entrepreneur on fire or school of podcasting or the audacity to podcast or, you know, hardcore history. We all have the ability with our content and our message to reach a global audience. And this is something I strongly believe in allowing and teaching our students to do. Now, again, I'm a social studies teacher, not a math teacher. So I'm pretty sure the math is correct on this one in that 100%. This is the percentage of people you won't reach if you don't have a podcast. Uh, I, I learned early on when I was learning how to podcast uh, from Cliff Ravenscraft that, you know, podcasting kind of puts our content and our voice and our message into a smaller haystack. Sure, I, I can teach students how to produce content on YouTube or how to blog, but there are so many blogs out there, so many YouTube channels, so much video content in the world. And yet podcasting is still a small piece of the content creation that's out there. So there are still an untapped area of ways to get our students to put out great content. So let's take a look at some of the benefits of podcasting and education. Number one, obviously if students are creating podcasts or consuming podcasts, you have that flexible availability 24 hours a day. One of the greatest advantages of podcast is the portability and convenience that they offer. So we're talking about podcast as a learning tool. Students and teachers are a large piece of the mobile device population, allowing our students to access the learning resources anytime, anywhere with very little effort is a win. So as soon as they sit down on the bus, there's a teaching resource that's there waiting for them. This makes podcasts a very convenient and also paves the way for a truly flexible learning experience. Number two, students listen for longer than they'll watch or read. It is tricky. Again, I do this every day, five days a week, six times a day. It is very tricky to encourage my students to spend 30 minutes reading an article or taking a look at the textbook or watching a lengthy video. That's because text and video require my students full attention. They need to sit patiently doing just one thing. As you probably know, this is not easy. Even in our own lives as adults, if we want to read something or we want to watch something, that's what we have to focus on. Just think about the distractions waiting for you right now in your next browser tab. You might even be on that next tab right now and not looking at my slide, but that's okay. Podcasting, on the other hand, can be done in otherwise, quote unquote, wasted time or alongside a routine activity, just like we do as adults. Students are far more likely to listen to your material if they can do it on the bus, driving in the car, washing dishes, going to the gym, because they're already distracted with a routine task. The content gets great attention. While text and video struggle to attract two or three minutes of viewing, podcasts routinely run, you know, fill in the time. It could be a half hour. It could be 45 minutes. It could be over an hour. You know, as we all know that there are very popular shows in the world where the show runs every time more than three hours and it's engaging content. We can be engaging our students that same way and also promoting with them how they can engage their peers and the world that they're going to be living in. Number three, student created content. This is the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning. One of the uses of podcasting and education is student created content. Let's make our classrooms less about content consumption and more about content creation. As a student and teacher of history, I know it can be super dry and super boring. You might even be sitting here thinking right now watching this, man, I really didn't like history. Well, that's because you probably had a really boring social studies teacher or pick the subject, math, science, it doesn't matter. If you have an engaging teacher who provides engaging opportunities, you're going to have a better experience. I always struggled with making meaning of content, but since I added a focus on creation in my classroom, 
I've seen student interest increase, not in a way that I can really quantify or measure, but I know that my students are attentive and they look forward to coming to class. Real quick, shout out here in the live chat to Podcasters Direct. I will share a link at the end of this session where you can get these slides and also the resources that I talk about. Thank you so much for asking and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Now, again, with student created content, we should be encouraging students to potentially create their own podcasts, perhaps including questions, discussions, presentations, or projects, sort of like a portfolio, but with audio. These can then be made available to their classmates, to other teachers, their family, maybe your students or your family. Maybe you're in a district that is separated because of the military or other circumstances where you're not all together in the same place at the same time. This is a great way to share your work and your ideas and your learning with your loved ones. Students would then have the ability to question and they can contribute and they can teach each other. I've learned or have come to the realization that in order to be the distinguished educator, your students have to basically want to come to class, even though that even if they didn't have to, and you can't be there. Like your students have to want to show up and teach themselves. That's what would make me the greatest educator of all time. So realize that that's what teachers are facing. Number four, lecture or lesson review. One of the simplest uses of podcasting is to simply record our lectures or our lessons. This can be audio or video, and you can consider creating a supplemental resource for your students. This makes them easily accessible for students and creates invaluable study aids. Students can use the podcast from your class for reference purposes or when preparing themselves for upcoming exams or other assessments. Any student who had challenges understanding a topic in the classroom can certainly listen to a podcast. They can study the content and understand the topic at their own pace. The capacity to review again and again is particularly valuable to students from an international background or if they have learning disabilities or other learning challenges. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, it's a struggle to encourage students to watch a one hour video, for example. Instead, give your students something they can listen to and consume while they do something else. I love that time shifted aspect of podcasts. It's, it's, it's one of the biggest benefits. Number five, podcasts allow your students to make up for missed class. And if you haven't picked up on it, these particular benefits are geared towards you as the teacher creating podcast content. So when a student misses class, it's not always because, you know, they're lazy or they're cutting, you know, sometimes they're sick, family emergency. So by offering a podcast, your unlucky sick student who has missed a number of classes could instead download recordings of lessons or watch videos or check out other materials or resources you're putting out there. And they'll be able to fill in the gaps. And when they come back to class, you know, you can have further conversation to make sure that they're getting the support and the learning that they need. Further, a teacher who is unable to attend his or her own classes, maybe you have a family emergency or you're sick, you can put out a supplemental resource and your students could listen to it in class, whether you're posting to Google Classroom or you email students uh, a short video or MP3 file to listen to when they come to class. And you make the substitutes life a little easier as well. Eileen, absolutely. Students want to multitask just like us, whether it's on their cell phone or listening to music. That's something that I encounter all the time in my classroom. And so does every teacher, you know, e even, you know, second, third and fourth graders, you know, they've got their phones in class. So the tools are already there. How can we empower these kids? Okay. The next point consistency of the student experience. Lesson recordings can help a teacher to ensure that they always cover any given topic in the best way possible and to the fullest amount that they can. This comes in handy when the teacher in question teaches multiple sessions to the same class. I'm sorry, multiple sessions of the same class. It helps the teacher to ensure that every student gets the same experience, the same information, and the syllabus is covered pretty uniformly. I sometimes feel bad in my classroom when I'm working with my first block students as opposed to my last block students where I've had the ability over the course of a day or two days to um, 
This is the beauty of life, folks. <laughs> uh, over the course of a full day, I will make changes to my lessons. And sometimes the last batch of students that I see, they get a completely more refined experience than those students I see at eight o'clock in the morning. And the last point, the benefits for any mental or visual impairments. Perhaps one of the greatest pedagogical characteristics offered by educational podcasting is the chance to learn through listening. To many of the world's current students, learning through listening is enjoyable and less tedious than reading. And I've mentioned this already. Educational podcasts are appealing and may encourage students who don't like reading. Not everybody does. Many students may even struggle through reading with mental impairments such as dyslexia. Uh, dyslexia. And podcasts can be a big aid in kind of solving this issue or at least making it better for our students. Podcasts are equally useful in cases where visual impairment makes it difficult to look at traditional texts or you know any other material you may need them to see. So obviously if they have auditory impairments, maybe podcasting isn't the way to go. But for most kids, this would be a great new way to potentially engage your students. So now what? Using podcasts in your teaching can encourage your students to engage with your classes your material, and to never miss a thing. Podcasting is one of the best things you could do for your students. As I say on my podcast, you know, using technology isn't difficult, just give it a try. I feel the same way about podcasting. So let's give podcasting a try in our classrooms. So now I want to share with you what I have kind of put together as the podcaster's toolbox, but for the classroom. So here are some things that I recommend that any classroom or teacher who wants to get involved in podcasting, either for their students, with their students, or to introduce for their students to do, here are the things that I recommend. One, if you're in a classroom, all of your students, well, most of them, almost all of them, should have a smartphone or access to a smartphone. In terms of microphones, you don't need to use fancy you know, thousands of dollar hardware, you can use some simple microphones from Audio Technica or Samson. And these are going to be great microphones that are going to produce great quality. And in the world of education, sometimes it's not always easy to come by certain funding. So these are great tools that don't cause either your teacher budget or your school budget or your department budget to break the bank. So one thing that I have in here is also, you see a little screenshot of something like the Spreaker app. So that's going to take advantage of what students are able to do with their, um, what was I saying? To, to <laughs> take advantage of what they're doing with their smartphones. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm being joined now by one of my best friends in education and in podcasting. So I want to welcome the audio, maybe the video, of one AJ Bianca, who is my co-host on podcast PD. AJ, are you there, buddy? I am, I'm here. I thought I was just listening, but I am here. You are here. You are live. The whole world is listening. You are on the International Podcast Day broadcast. Oh, hello, everybody. Happy, <laughs> happy International Podcasting Day. So real quick, AJ, can you just let everybody know what your role is in education and talk a little bit about how you have used podcasting in education from your perspective? Yeah, sure. Uh, so currently I'm a middle school social studies teacher. I'm teaching seventh and eighth grade. And uh, podcasting for me is something that, first of all, I got into as a little hobby, a little side hobby. I enjoy listening to podcasts on a regular basis. So I decided, uh, how do we use these things in the classroom? And I started looking into that and started focusing on using small little snippets of different podcasts for my students. Um, whether it's a debate format or just informational. And then this guy, Mr. Nessie, said you should create <laughs> podcasts. So I started a club in my school where we started creating podcasts. And I've had a bunch of students who have come and kind of shared their passions, the things they like to do with movie reviews or video games or fashion or animals. And uh, I've held a club and successful, I might add that uh, have another eight kids signed up to start this Thursday and they'll be creating their own podcast in a number of weeks. 
So that's the story for school. And then, of course, if you're going to do podcasting, you have to start your own. So now I got Nessie starting my own podcast with him and Stacy Lindez as we uh, journey and venture into sharing our background in education and our passions. And I think that's the big thing is that we get to talk about things that we like, we enjoy, and we want to learn about. Yeah, that is, that, that's what it's all about, right? Absolutely. So do you want to help me talk about some of this other gear and stuff? I will help you with whatever you want to. Just want you to know I'm not doing the video because I don't think everybody wants to watch me fold laundry right now. <laughs> hey, <laughs> podcasting and broadcasting anytime. There you go. Anywhere. A new, pod- a new podcast about folding laundry. <laughs> All right. So to pick back up with the presentation, uh, in, in terms of hardware and stuff, you could certainly add to your classroom a USB mixer or really something that I've grown to fall in love with since I finally purchased one earlier this year is the, you know, the, uh, the zoom H six where I could connect multiple microphones up to, up to six really. And, you know, if I'm working with, you know, XLR microphones, whether it's the audio technicas or the Samson's, it's a really easy way to set up great podcasting stations in the classroom. Now, AJ, what do you use in your club and in your classroom for podcasting right now? So for the club, I actually, if the kids want to start practicing, I just let them bring in their headphones and they, uh, they record through their headphones using Soundtrap. Um, but when, on big recording days, I let them use my mic and I sit with them to help them learn how to edit. And I'll do one kid at a time and we'll use the uh, Audio Technica. But all, all the things I'm using is through Soundtrap so that the kids can learn basic editing from there. Yeah, Soundtrap is super powerful because it is web-based, which means us as teachers, we don't have to really worry about um, downloading software or working with our district IT departments to get software installed. Mm -hmm. It's web-based, so we just got to make sure it's unblocked. Yeah, it's unblocked, and because we have Chromebooks, it connects beautifully with your uh, Google Drive account, so it's an easy easy connection, and you know, we're, we're starting to learn how to do the collaboration piece uh, connecting Google accounts and uh, working together to share one common podcast instead of having their own co- podcast. So that's going to be on the table for this year as well. And obviously, you know, I can't wait to see how this happens because I'm here in the background getting ready to support you. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm going to need you. So it's perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. So in terms of when you want to have student podcasts out there, Obviously, like all podcasters, we need to think about where we want our MP3 files to live and how we're going to make them accessible. So obviously, like in the the great big, quote unquote, real world of podcasting, I certainly recommend to teachers and schools and districts that they check out Libsyn, Blueberry and Spreaker. And those are the what I think are the big three. There are a number of others, but these are the ones that I have experience with. So I feel comfortable recommending them. Obviously, Spreaker is a great go-to for the classroom because they let you kind of get started in podcasting and do it, quote-unquote, the right way. And they have a great mobile app that is iOS and Android compatible. And also, they have great desktop software for the Windows or the Mac. Obviously, that certainly makes it easy when you can lower the barrier to entry like we try and do with adults. If we make it easy for students to get into podcasting, then they're more likely to stick with it. The other thing that I recommend that teachers do when they want to do this is to simply take advantage of Google Drive. Now, this doesn't allow them to do podcasting the way you or I think about it, AJ, or anybody else who's watching, Mm -hmm. but the ability to have a place to upload a file and share it and have people be able to download it. Yes, we're eliminating the RSS feed and the ability to use a podcast catcher, but a classroom or a school can certainly make these MP3 files available for the community to download and they could see, certainly be hosted on Google drive without a problem. Yeah. I, like I said, you know, I put all my stuff on, on Soundtrap. So from that it's an easy download and then I throw it towards the students. So I share it with them and they can throw it into their drive. And I do host it on my Google classroom um, that I then put try to put on my website for my, for my club. But uh, really I focus on the Google classroom aspect because I know the kids want it. And they can share it with their families nice and easily. Nice. But I, I wonder, though, 
like I love Soundtrap and I love everything else that, that I that I do. Do you do you think since this is edu- educational, should I focus on using Spreaker in my classroom, or do you think that's too much for my students? I think, and this this gets more into the idea of app smashing, where you could have students create their content using Soundtrap because it's a web based audio editor. And then once you have that MP3 file, where are they going to put it? Certainly Spreaker gives you that low cost, which means free option to kind of get your content out there. If a yeah, kid wanted to good. grow, they could certainly grow and put their content out and potentially mom or dad, or if they're an older student could potentially pay and kind of keep going with it. So it, it certainly is a viable platform where you can really use any of the three in combination. It's just where do you want to host the content? That's something I'm playing around with this year. Like I, I'm trying to figure if I want to create like like last year was just a it was a learning experience. Every year is gonna be a learning experience. So it was using Google Classroom, it was sending it out, putting it on the website, and that's like a school website. Now I'm trying to figure out, okay, so if I'm going a little deeper with this, do I then now create my own Google site that's strictly for our club? Yeah, so I'm trying to improve it every year and I'm trying to grab some more kids and get their interests going and have other kids share what they've done. You know, it's all about them. You know, it's not even for me. It's all about them and what they are going to do going forward. Something that they're proud of. Absolutely. So AJ, I want to thank you for a couple of minutes and I know I'll see you a little bit later tonight when we lay down another podcast PD episode. So I will see you later, buddy. Thank you for hopping on for a few minutes. No problem. Glad I was here. All right. I'll see you later, buddy. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. Thank you again, AJ. You can connect with him on Twitter. He is at AJ Bianco, and that's B I A N C O. And he is always looking to connect with other content creators. And obviously, that he does a podcasting club in his school, that would be great for him to connect with other podcasters. Because right now, it's just me who's talking to him. So, it's a little biased and very much one-sided in terms of the podcast perspective that I provide. (laughs) So on we go. So in terms of software in the classroom, there are so many great programs and websites and platforms that are out there, but I do try to keep it to things that are free and in education free is my favorite, favorite four letter F word. So, how are we going to ha- how can we have students record conversations or capture some audio in the classroom? Google Hangouts is a great way to do that because you have the ability to go live and then from that video you can download the audio or download the video and then pull out the audio from that. Next up you can use Zencaster for free, which say what you want, they they do put out a nice product, bugs aside, but it is great to have students recording content and a great way to capture those conversations. Of course, Spreaker Studio, which I mentioned already, Audacity is my digital audio workstation of choice. Now, some of you may have your program of choice, but this is the one that I use and feel most comfortable teaching and showing other people how to use because it is free and certainly fits the budget of educators. And I do want to give a special shout out to the Daniel J. Lewis for all that he has taught me over five plus years of podcasting with his early episodes and so many of the tutorials that he has created and put out there. Thank you so much, Daniel. Really, really appreciate it. And I'm just paying it forward by sharing it with other people. GarageBand, I don't use it, but certainly there are students out there who are comfortable editing audio and this is something that they've played with. So they're comfortable using it. Soundtrap, as AJ just talked about. And of course, Boss Jock Studio has the ability on an iPad to, or or iPhone, and now with the many sizes they come in, you know, the biggest iPhone might as well be the iPad mini mini. (laughs) So Boss Jock is another tool that lets us capture audio. And while Boss Jock Studio is a paid app, there is, and I don't have it listed here, Boss Jock Studio, which is for free and just has, I think maybe six or eight audio carts that you can record to or load audio up and create your content. Next up, obviously in a school, what do we want to potentially have students creating content about? 
So here are some sample segments or sample things that could happen. We're, we're not limited to this. So as you hear me say some of these, if you have ideas for what students could create segments about or create podcasts about in their school, certainly please throw them in the chat so I can copy and paste them, add them to this presentation and pass them off as my own ideas in the future. <laughs> so we have a segment that I like to call state of the, where you could have your principal or your superintendent sharing the latest big picture updates about a school or a district. I don't know any principal or superintendent who doesn't like to have the microphone and wax poetic about their schools and their districts and really sell the great things that are happening in their schools. And this is so important because if you're not telling your school story, who is? So control the message. The last thing you want is your story to be told because something went wrong and the newspaper showed up. Then we have arts and events. You can do announcements for staff and students. Obviously, the calendar of what's coming or what has happened. You know, just think how cool it would be if, you know, from the from the band concert or other sporting events, if you have highlights or interviews with your student athletes or your art students, and you're just promoting the work that they're doing and the work that they're creating. Then you have the faculty spotlight which is a great time to interview the teachers in your building, have students interviewing teachers. And really what I think this does, and it's so important and lacking in education, is let's humanize our greatest assets. Teachers are people too. In the younger grades, I know when I was little, I thought the teacher lived at school, slept in the closet or slept on the desk, and they were just there every day that I showed up. Well, that's not the case. Now that I am a teacher, I know that I have a million and one other things going on in my life in addition to what I do as a teacher. So to get to know some of our teachers and add that human element into what we're doing in our schools could certainly prove very valuable in making long lasting connections and solid relationships between our students and our teachers and our teachers and the community. Next up, a, a really popular one, student shout outs. Give students a reason to listen and participate in their school podcast. Do birthday shout outs. Do just Fundraising shout outs, charge a dollar. It's, it's, you know, not everybody can call the local radio station and get their shout out on the air, but here's a way that you can create content and get students to quote unquote, be on the radio or on the air. And now this next one, this is, I'm going to kind of go out of order here. So the last one, jokes, trivia, have fun, be entertaining. You know, podcasting is like going to the Outback Steakhouse. It's no rules, just right. <laughs> And the last one that I really want to focus on, because now this is where I'm looking to all of you who are listening here on internationalpodcastday.com, and that's the ability to connect with our community. Now, many of you who are watching and listening, you aren't classroom teachers. You're content creators who live in communities that have schools and students. So potentially, you have the ability to connect with your local school, your school district, and get involved, potentially sponsor a podcast, or it kind of guide these schools in how to create this content. You know, a school podcast that maybe gets a sponsorship deal with the local pizza place, you know, mention that you heard this ad on the podcast and get your slice and your Coke. And, you know, you're kind of getting the community involved in the schools and the schools are, are one of our most important community centers. So my biggest podcasting tips for the world of education, whether I'm talking to teachers or to students, it's, I've really broken this down to three things. Number one, have a plan, have a vision. Don't just turn on the microphone and start talking. That's not going to work. Number two, once you have that plan and you have that vision, just hit record, just hit it. It's, it's not going to bite you. It's going to be okay. Here's the inside secret. If you record something you don't like, or it doesn't sound good, don't let anybody else listen to it. It's really that simple. And then the third thing, like Rudy, stick with it. Just keep going. You know, I've, at the time that I'm doing this, I've released 118 episodes of the house of ed tech podcast. And I apologize for the first 117 because I'm always learning something new about this art form. I love it so much. So if I convey nothing else, I've spent the last 40 minutes professing my love for this art form on International Podcast Day. Now, again, just to kind of hit home, what can you do? 
as a content creator who is not a classroom teacher to get involved. Donate your time. Reach out to your local school or your local district and let them know, hey, I'm a podcaster. How could I get in touch with a teacher who teaches communication or TV or media studies in the school system, whether it's middle school or high school? You know, how can you get involved? Maybe there's a STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and math. And maybe you can do a guest appearance and talk about audio editing and waveforms and the science behind sound if, you know, you really understand that. You can certainly be a valuable resource, not just what our kids are reading in books or finding when they do Google searches. Potentially, maybe you have some old gear that you can't sell, you can't use it anymore, but it still works. Maybe you could consider making a donation to your local school or your local school district and kind of get that equipment into the hands of people who have no equipment and are at the very beginning. And then again, it's an opportunity where you could potentially donate your time and teach the kids how to use it. Maybe get involved in a club like AJ Bianco's and maybe come by once a month and talk with the kids and teach them what you know or what you've learned, because then ultimately you're donating knowledge. And it's one thing for me to walk into my classroom and say to people that, or my students rather, that we are a community of learners. When I walk into a room, I tell my kids, and these are high school freshmen right now, I will, and I have told them, I am not the smartest person in the room. No individual person is the smartest person in the room. Together, all of our combined experience, experiences, learning, and perspective the room itself is very intelligent and super smart. So if we can contribute to that in some way and promote podcasting at the same time, it's, it's a beautiful thing that I hope we're all able to take advantage of. So just let me finish up here. I hope that we can all continue this conversation. Please share me with an educator that you know. Again, my website is chrisnessy.com. If you'd like to get the resources I shared here in this presentation for International Podcast Day, you can go over to chrisnessy.com slash school podcast. That's chrisnessy.com slash school podcast. I would love to connect with all of you on Twitter. I am at Mr. Nessie. I'm on Instagram with my podcast at House of Ed Tech. And you can email me, Mr. at chrisnessy.com. So now if you've got questions or anything you'd like to bring up via the chat, I am certainly here for another less than 10 minutes. And again, I am very excited to have been a part of International Podcast Day. And I just can't say it enough. Thank you to the team at International Podcast Day for allowing me to be a part of this. It was over a year ago that I reached out and you guys were gracious enough to give me the opportunity to come on here and share my passion, which is podcasting and content creation. And I'm just doing it a little bit differently than what you've seen already and what you're going to see over the rest of today for International Podcast Day. So if you got questions, that's awesome. If not, I can certainly sing. I can dance. Well, I'm not going to dance, but. <laughs> yeah, Chris, I think there's a, a couple questions in the chat room here. Uh, one that says, what is uh, some of the resistance you get from your students? The same resistance that we get from adults. I don't like the sound of my own voice. That's like, that's the biggest thing. I don't want to record. I'm going to feel embarrassed. So as if middle school wasn't hard enough, now we're going to make them record and let other people hear what they sound like, Peter Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Now, that's really interesting. Uh, I think there's another comment in here, um, not really a question, but if you want to elaborate, it says, unfortunately, too many teachers slash admins are so worried about losing control of the message. Students have less, not more access to the airwaves. That I mean, that to me is classroom management. So obviously, while we can show kids the tools, if we're designing assignments for them or creating certain types of projects, that's going to reduce those things. But once I show a student how to use, say, something like Spreaker, and they've got that app, and they go off and they start their own podcast, and they put out content, I don't really have any control over what they do outside the classroom. In the classroom is where I can show them best practices and kind of build on in education. What we talk about is digital citizenship. And what type of footprint are they putting out there in terms of the content, whether it's on their Instagram or their Snapchat or 
if we're moving in this direction, when your podcast is out there, what are you putting out into the world? How are you going to be responsible with that? So that is a little bit on me or other teachers. Yeah, there's a follow-up question from Eileen. She says, so how do you convince them when they don't like the sound of their own voice? Uh, sometimes you just have to tell them what they have to do because you're the teacher and they're the student. Um, so that, that's the harsh answer. The reality is you work with them. I, I play them samples of my podcast. I let them listen to my first episode when I introduce this and I tell them about you know, the equipment I was using and how I, I myself wasn't afraid to just hit record and put myself out there so they can relate to that. And it makes me seem more human. And then I do get a little bit more buy-in, but see, the other thing is for the kid who really doesn't want to record or be heard. Then I talk to them about some of the other things they can do in podcasting, whether it's graphic design, website design, uh, script writing, researching, um, so while I am not a NPR team of 30, you know, I might have kids who take on different roles and have teams of five or six to work on a podcast. Yeah, it's interesting because I know, you know, in, you know, you've been podcasting for a number of years. I have too. And we, we all have our, our nuances. We all have our skill set that's going to work. It may not be in front of the mic. It may be, like you said, audio production. It could be graphic design. It could be writing, whatever it is. So we all sort of have our 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 skill set to contribute to the overall podcast in general right and i think i think um we shouldn't overcomplicate that when it comes to the to the students and the children i think just like them there's some people that are going to get behind the mic and want to talk and want to share and want to have their voice heard and there's ones that are behind the scenes making things happen i think there's one last question here it says do most of them have ios or android it it, it depends uh, where it actually depends on where you are in the country uh, in my particular classroom, I do have a majority of iOS devices, not a lot of Android. So if, it, when it comes to consumption, I certainly recommend Android friendly apps and iOS friendly apps for consuming podcast content. And that, that's another thing. A lot of what I talked about in this time slot was creating and promoting creation. But something I also do is try and show them, here's a lot of the great content that's out there that you can consume whether I'm creating it for you or, you know, there's, there are history podcasts, science podcasts that are certainly high quality that my textbook or their other textbooks aren't going to provide because they're five, seven, 10 years old. The podcast that came out last week could be way more current. So that, that's another aspect that I kind of push to kids as well. Yeah, that's very interesting. Let me check here. Yeah, I, I did want to highlight a couple of your episodes on um, chrisnessy.com, and I did drop that link for uh, .com slash school podcast in, in the chat room if you guys want to grab the slides. So I've, I've noticed with, you know, use the hashtag EdTech a lot. There was one, uh, episode 116, that you're inspiring critical thinking with EdTech, and uh, the tagline here is when you implement technology in your classroom, your goal should be to push students to go beyond fact memorization and embrace a conceptual understanding of the material. And then you also go through and you had you had a first grader perspective, your son, Miles, who's entering the first grade talking about education and technology. I mean, what an opportunity to reach uh, educators to expose your son and other kids to this medium. I think it's a really cool uh, project and it's a cool podcast that you have going on right here. That is uh, one of my favorite episodes that ranks up there with, I had my dad on a couple of times. He was on my hundredth episode and, and one later, but to have my son on who is again, six years old, you know, he, and I told Dave Jackson this the other day, my son plays podcasting. He does his own Facebook live show on my, you know, private personal Facebook for family and friends. And he is a six year old ham <laughs> and he's, he's into this, you know, he, he's into vacuum. So we've actually been talking this weekend about creating a vacuum themed podcast where he can kind of talk about all this stuff. And he's six and he understands what it's like to come into the home studio and respect the equipment. And like, like anything, our kids pick up our passions. So it's something that I'm proud to pass on to him. And even my little one will come in here and put the headphones on and kind of play around. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. I think one of the awesome things about introducing podcast into the educational space and also opening up, you know, and experiencing the power of podcast in the in the classroom is just that spark of creativity that a student can get, right? It may maybe they're not comfortable behind the mic now. Perhaps in two weeks they are. Maybe they found that 
graphic design and writing or audio editing is their passion, right? And so you don't really, you, you kind of unlock that creativity once you give them that opportunity to dive in and sort of work with the tools and resources at their disposal. Have you been experiencing that with your classroom and your students? Like a thousand percent. Uh, again, I teach high school history and here's the inside thing of my classroom. It's not about the history. I'm not out to make my students in the future go out and win Jeopardy. So we're not memorizing facts or dates. I'm promoting critical thinking, content creation, collaboration, and communication. Podcasting is one way that I'm able to do that. And it's not about memorization and just, just the facts. You know, it's how are they going to go out into the world and really contribute something? And if I can help them to discover their passions and their interests along the way, that's only going to benefit them way more than if they know what happened, pick a year, pick a date. That, that's not important. Is there any, I'm, I'm trying to think, obviously you have a captive audience for you know eight to nine months. Is there anything that you can pass along to your students, say during the summer months, that can keep them sort of inspired to continue to go on that creative path or work within the podcasting space? Um, are, are you giving them suggestions to shows to listen to, things to sub, 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 uh, sub, sub, subscribe to? Uh, what are you doing on that level? Of course I am. I, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't give them things to do in the summer when they would otherwise be doing, you know, Fortnite or fill in the video game True. of choice. So absolutely. Um, I don't have any recommendations right now off the top of my head, but I do make recommendations, you know, through Google Classroom, which is the uh, the platform that I use. And I push out some things over, you know, May and June where we are in New Jersey to say, here are some things you can do to get ready for, say, US1. Or based on things I've learned about you, here are some great generic, you know, productivity podcasts or just some other things that might enhance your existence or you just might enjoy listening to. Yeah, because I know that summer break comes, right? And you're like, all right, time off, time to, like you said, hit the video games, time to get outside, play some sports, whatever it is. Uh, but create, keep, keeping that creative spark going throughout throughout the, uh, the 12 months can, can be very difficult. I know it's, it's difficult for us as adults and, and I know it would be the same for children. Absolutely. But I mean, the thing is for the kid who is, is, you know, say athletically minded and is involved in, you know, a hundred different activities, they're going to go do that. And that's how they're going to recharge and, you know, go, go through the motions there for the kid who's not into that. Maybe in the eight to nine months I've had them 10 months, I've opened up something new that they can do with their free time where maybe otherwise they were just sitting around doing nothing. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Chris, I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing about the power of podcast in education. For International Podcast Day, I'm so glad you reached out a year ago. I'm so glad it worked out into our schedule. So before we hop out of here, again, let people know your podcast, where they can connect with you, and where they can get the information on the slides for this show. Sure. And thank you again to your team for letting me be a part of this awesome, awesome event. So again, I'm Chris Nessie. I'm on Twitter at Mr. Nessie. My main podcast is the House of EdTech podcast, which helps teachers utilize and leverage technology in education. And you can find that at chrisnessy.com. And if you enjoyed this presentation that I just gave, go to chrisnessy.com slash school podcast. All right, Chris. Well, thank you very much. Happy International Podcast Day to you. I hope you have fun celebrating the rest of the day. I will. I'm recording another podcast later. <laughs> that makes sense. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, we will be back in a little bit, continuing to celebrate International Podcast Day, featuring 40 podcasters from 16 different countries all broadcast live uh, to wherever you may be. So thank you again. Happy International Podcast Day, everybody.